Well, while folks are still gathering and coming back in, um, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. And thank you for coming. And we'd say to folks that watch by way of the front row, thank you for tuning in. And uh, pray that God will bless you. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we cert certainly appreciate it. I'm going to be in the book of Psalms this morning. Psalms chapter number 10. Psalms chapter number 10, uh, page 603. If you have an old Schofield Bible. And while you're finding your place, uh, let me say, I put out some, uh, some more pins up here. I got a couple of colors here, but... Uh, I got, let's see, we got red and purple and gray and black and green. And so if you would like uh, a different color or a couple of them, whatever, uh, you know, and these, uh, these actually have uh, the church's name and address as well as the YouTube channel on them. So, uh, and uh, if you like these, I, I think personally, I think they write really well. I, I like the way they write, and they, they seem to be pretty solid. But uh, if you uh, like them, uh, they're, they're good for, uh, you know, maybe handing somebody. They can uh, look at that. Maybe they'll look us up on YouTube uh, and uh, start watching us on, uh, on YouTube, on the channel there. Amen. So keep that in mind. The folks who are on the front row, uh, and if you want one, then send me uh, an email. Uh, uh, at uh, srbcgso uh, at gmail.com um, and that's on the channel srbcgso like Solid Rock Baptist Church Greensboro <coughs> at gmail.com send me an email uh, I'll send you a pen if you got a specific color uh, like I said, black, gray, uh, the, the barrel of the color, uh, the, the uh, color of the ink is all black, but the barrels are uh, either gray or black or blue or green or red or purple. Uh, so <laughs> send me a request. I'll be glad to send you a pen. Amen. All right. All right. Psalms chapter number 10. And I want to read uh, one verse of scripture. Uh, well, uh, actually, let me go back and I, I said one verse, but I want to read uh, uh, a couple of verses. Start at verse number four. Uh, uh, the wicked, through his, uh, the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far uh, above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in uh, the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places uh, doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privately set against the poor. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor, and he doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this opportunity we have to be in your house. Thank you, Lord, for these that have come today. I pray, Lord, that you might search out every heart. You know our hearts and uh, Lord, we have uh, different needs, and, but God, uh, nothing beyond what you have capacity to work with. I pray, Lord, you'd speak to our hearts, all of us today. I pray that you guard our lips, help us to say only those things that would be pleasing unto thee. Uh, save those, we pray, that are lost and undone, and draw those that are cold and indifferent. We'll thank you for all you do. In Christ's name and for his sake we pray, amen. Verse 9 is the one I want to concentrate on. These verses, uh, by the way, uh, this chapter, uh, David is the writer, and he's talking about the wicked. 
the unregenerate man, the one who is not saved, the, the one who has lost uh, all of his compunction about uh, anything idealistic or anything that is right. Uh, in fact, he describes him that God is not in his thoughts, not at all. Uh, his mouth, he says, is full of cursing and deceit, and you probably recognize that uh, from another place in the book of Romans. Uh, the, the Bible mentions that in the book of Romans. Uh, his mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. His feet are swift to shed blood, uh, uh, and so on. Um, and so they go hand in hand. But verse number nine is what I want to concentrate on. He lieth and waits secretly as a lion in his den. As a lion in his den. I, I read a story, uh, it's been a couple of years ago now, about a, a, uh, a woman uh, uh, living in uh, Africa. And uh, I don't know if her husband was dead. She didn't mention her husband, but she did mention her child and she talked about her life there and the things they had to do and you know they didn't have uh, water in the house like we have here they had to go take a container and and walk to get water and she talked about uh, the dangers that were out there in the bush she called it uh, uh, particularly from lions and when they would go to get water uh, and, and she talked about how frightening it was to go out uh, and uh, be walking the pass uh, and coming home, uh, uh, especially if it was uh, getting dusk. And, and uh, you know, I think she had actually lost uh, one of her children, and uh, she had started taking the precaution that, you know, when it starts to get dusk, Nobody goes outside the house, uh, and she could uh, tell, tell about the lions that you know would be outside pacing uh, the house. They would lie in wait uh, just for an opportunity to see if they could uh, you know take uh, a person, a woman, a child. It didn't matter to them uh, if they were hungry. Uh, you know the Bible says in First Peter chapter five and verse number eight uh, that the devil is as a roaring lion, a roaring lion. He walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I can't imagine a stronger adversary. They call him king of the jungle, you know. And it's no coincidence that uh, governments over the centuries have used lions to depict, uh, uh, you know, their power. Uh, and their glory and their strength, you know, uh, uh, Babylon used them and other countries have used them. You see them on flags, you see them, uh, you know, on signet rings and, and you still see them today. Uh, a lion's a powerful force. But it's interesting to me uh, that the Bible describes uh, uh, Jesus as a lion of the tribe of Judah, but it also describes the devil as a roaring lion. You say, well, why would God do that? Well, uh, because the devil is uh, all of, uh, uh, you know, the wrong things or all of the things that we fear in a lion. But Jesus, uh, you know, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh, but I want to ask you this morning, uh, you know, we look at uh, uh, what I would like to say, the lion's club in the Bible. You know, there are some members of the Lions Club. You know, we have a, a Lions Club uh, around today along with, I guess, the elks and the moose and, you know, all that, uh, uh, you know, or the frogs or whatever. I don't know. But uh, the Lions Club, that, there is a Lions Club in, in the Bible, uh, and there are several people uh, uh, who are members of it. And I want to know, you know, are you a member of the Lions Club? You say, what do you mean, preacher? Well, uh, 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 let me tell you about somebody in the Bible uh, who was a member of the Lions Club. Uh, Samson faced a lion, uh, and this lion challenged uh, his determination. Amen? Now, I, I think you uh, will find out uh, if you are saved, and by the way, it's not limited to just the saved, uh, because if you're lost and, and you try to come to Christ, you're, you're going to face uh, the lion, he's going to do everything he can to, to keep you from God. But if you're saved, you're going to face that roaring lion. Samson did. Uh, uh, his mission 
was not understood. Judges chapter 14, and I'll try to be as quick as I can. Uh, the Bible said he came up and he told his father and his mother, and he said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, go and get her for me to wife. Now, his father and his mother said, Samson, you know, couldn't you pick a, 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 a woman of Israel? Couldn't you pick one of uh, our own uh, fine? I'm sure Israel had many fine uh, women uh, who would have uh, really been glad to have married a man like Samson. Uh, and, uh, but the Bible said, here's the, the, the kicker. Uh, Judges 14.4 said, but his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines, for at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. You see, Israel was under the thumb of the Philistines. They controlled everything. They controlled uh, the economy. They controlled the crops. Uh, they, in fact, uh, you know, controlled uh, uh, the, the ability to make weapons and, and all that. And many times this happened. They weren't allowed to make a sword because they, uh, they were forbidden to do that. They weren't allowed uh, 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 to do these things. And by the way, uh, uh, you know, our country uh, may face this. This is, this is one reason, let me be honest here, this is one reason that uh, the government would love uh, uh, for you and I to lose our Second Amendment rights because uh, if you don't have weapons, then you're easily controlled and you're easily conquered. That's right. That's the whole reason behind it. If you study communism and you study countries that were conquered by communism, the first thing they did, the communist or the fascist or whoever they was, the first thing they did was take away the weapons of the people. And we'll get to that in a minute. But listen, they didn't know that it was a, an occasion that he sought against the Philistines. God raised him up for a purpose, so his mission was not understood. Let me say this, you uh, as a Christian uh, should uh, uh, you know, read your Bible and pray and seek the guidance of the Lord, and God may show you some things that he wants for you to do as an individual, uh, uh, but don't think that everybody's going to understand your mission. In fact, uh, uh, the Bible said a prophet has no honor in his own country. You know, I've seen people uh, who were saved. They got saved and they left their life of sin uh, and they started serving God uh, and uh, their family turned their back on them, you know. Uh, my wife has told me about her family, some of uh, her family. You know, when Brother Grover, before he got saved, he didn't go to church. And uh, my wife, she wanted to go. Margaret wanted to go, but, but he didn't want to go. He didn't uh, have any time for that. And, and the rest of the family would tell her when they saw her, uh, why don't y'all go to church? Uh, y'all need to go to church. Y'all don't ever go to church, you know. And it was always that pressure. And then, uh, uh, then the Lord uh, sent Brother Carl Brown uh, uh, to see uh, Brother Grover, uh, and uh, he went and, and went to the service and, and got under conviction and, and got saved on a Sunday morning. And when he got saved, I mean, he got, the, he got the whole ball of wax, Brother Wesley. He was in church every time the doors was open. He was visiting. He was telling folks about the Lord. Uh, he was going to church. Uh, and then uh, when they'd go see the rest of the family, the family would say, that, is that all y'all do is go to church? Y'all go to church all the time. And, and I'm thinking that, uh, you're the people that said, uh, don't y'all go to church, Cindy? What's wrong with y'all? And now you're saying, uh, all y'all do is go to church. Listen, that's the way families are, you know. Families can be that way. His uh, mission was not understood, and, and his mission was challenged. Uh, 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 Judges uh, uh, in 14.5 said, Samson went down, and his father and his mother to Timnath, and they came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. And of course, a battle ensued. This young lion came out on Samson. The young lion uh, didn't know that God had supercharged Samson. You talk about a superhero. You fellows that read about Superman or Batman or Spider-Man or, or whatever, uh, you know, the, uh, the Bible has its superhero. Samson was a man who had great strength. The Bible said he killed uh, a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey. The Bible said that he went to one city and they tried to lock him in the city 
uh, and he went out and he picked up the, the gates of the city and walked away, plucked them up out of the ground and walked away with them. Nobody could touch him because of his great strength, amen. Now, he's a type of what we ought to long to be, want to be, desire to be, uh, and aspire to be uh, is someone who is strong uh, in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Amen. Uh, uh, if we desire anything, it ought to be to be closer to God, uh, to have more power with God, uh, to have more strength with God. Amen. And I'm not talking about show, you know. I'm talking about, uh, you know, uh, in your prayer life particularly, you know, you, you want people who know that you can get in touch with God and shake the windows of heaven and you want people who know that they can call on you and you can, you can pray uh, and God will answer. That's somebody who uh, spends time with the Lord. That's what we need to be, Amen. He ensued in battle against this young lion. The Bible said he ripped him apart uh, uh, like he would a goat and threw him to the side. Uh, and then later on when they were coming back from Timnath, the Bible said that uh, he, uh, I don't know how long he spent there, but it was long enough for a bunch of bees to come and make, a, uh, 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 make their nest in the carcass of that lion. And... Uh, the Bible said he went by to see the lion and that, uh, that bunch of bees was there and they made a nest there and they were making honey and he reached in and got some honey uh, uh, out and he took some to his parents and he didn't tell them where he got it but honey, uh, honey was good. I don't know about you but I like honey, you know. Uh, uh, sourwood honey, clover honey. Uh, I, I like it, amen. Now, now uh, my wife, there's some honey that... Uh, you know, sometimes you get she can't eat it because uh, she's allergic to something in it. I guess wherever they pollinate, I think it's uh, alfalfa or something like that. But anyway, uh, honey is good. But he didn't tell his parents why. Uh, because he got it out of the carcass of a dead lion. And, and his vow that his parents had taken when he was born said that he was not to drink any wine. He was not to uh, touch uh, uh, any wine. He wouldn't even touch any grapes. He couldn't eat grapes off the vine. Uh, uh, and he was not to cut his hair. He was a... Uh, 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 he had made a vow to the Lord that he would keep this. Uh, he wasn't to touch anything that was dead. Wasn't to come near it. Uh, but he got this honey where? Out of the carcass of a dead lion. Amen. Uh, uh, his victory brought sweetness. Now, let me tell you. Let me tell you what. When, uh, when God answers prayer, there's victory in that. Amen. There is victory in that when the Lord answers prayer. Uh, and, and I want to tell you, when uh, uh, they called me uh, uh, the other day and asked me uh, to be praying, and they were praying for this person, and they were afraid that uh, she wasn't going to survive, and I said, I will pray. Uh, I, I will keep my word, and I did. I prayed and said a special prayer to the Lord. And, and then later on, uh, uh, they called me back uh, uh, and, and, uh, and told me that God had answered prayer, and she was awake, uh, uh, and her husband was able to go in and see her, uh, uh, you say, what was the first thing that happened? Well, the first thing that happened that crossed my mind was hallelujah, praise be to God. Uh, God is able. God has answered prayer. And I just had a couple of minutes where I just praised the Lord for answering prayer. It wasn't because of me, uh, but because God answered prayer. So the, the battle ensued in the prayer. Uh, but listen, victory came about and sweetness came about when God answered the prayer. And I said, praise be to God. God, uh, he is still on the throne, amen. Now, if you've never faced that kind of victory, you don't know what I'm talking about, but listen, you should. It's sweet, amen. When you see somebody get saved that you've been praying for, and you've been praying that God would speak to their heart, you've done all that you can do, and that's up to the Holy Spirit, and you see them get saved, uh, it's a matter of praising the Lord. I, I've told you this before many years ago. I, I was praying for my oldest brother, praying that he would get saved. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, he, he was raised in the same family I was. We went to church. We, we knew about God. We knew the plan of salvation. He knew all of that. Uh, he just wasn't saved. Uh, he was into uh, 
hunting and fishing and doing his own thing and, and all of that. It wasn't a bad person. He, he wasn't a wicked person or anything. He just wasn't saved. Uh, and uh, uh, one night, I can't remember if it was Sunday night or Wednesday night, it was the evening service we left and we came home. Uh, and, and when we got home, I pulled in the driveway. Uh, and you remember them old, uh, them old uh, AT&T uh, uh, telephones, uh, you know, uh, slim line telephones or whatever. But, but they were loud, you know. They had a loud ring to them. I stepped out of the car, and when I stepped out of the car, I could hear that thing ringing in the house. I don't know how I knew, uh, how I knew but God told me you need to answer that uh, uh, because, uh, you know, they're calling about your brother. I picked it up, uh, and it's my sister-in-law. Uh, and, and she said, I just want to tell you, your brother got saved at church tonight. Amen? And, and uh, I just said, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We've been praying. I had been. Others had been. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, it, it's a wonderful thing. It's wonderful today to sit down with him, you know, and, and hear him talk about the Lord. Amen. Listen, Samson faced a lion that challenged his determination. Uh, uh, was he determined uh, to go through with what God had instructed him to do? And, and so the, the devil's going to challenge your determination. Are you willing to, to do what it takes to support the work of the Lord, to keep coming to the house of the Lord, even though uh, others may give up? Uh, are you willing uh, uh, to do what it takes to invite others and to encourage others in the way of the Lord? Uh, the devil's going to challenge your determination. Are you willing? Secondly, the second man in the Lions Club is found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and I smote him, and delivered, him, uh, delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and I smote him, and I slew him. David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, a man after God's own heart, talking to King Saul about, uh, you know, about uh, uh, Goliath, who was down there in the valley cursing God and mocking God. And David said, uh, all of you are afraid. All of you are backing up. David said, this man makes me angry because he's cursing God. He's cursing my God. And I want to go to battle against him. And Saul said, boy, he said, you've... Uh, You've never fought in a battle, and he's been a man of war all his life. You see, the, uh, uh, the, the people of Saul, they trained their youth uh, uh, to be soldiers, to be warriors from the time they were small, you know. And Saul said, you, you haven't been. You, you're a keeper of the sheep. And David said, wait a minute, buddy. Don't underestimate me. I had a lion and a bear that came up and they took a lamb from my flock and I went after him. Now I'll tell you what, uh, it takes some nerve, amen. Somebody said some intestinal fortitude uh, to go after a lion or a bear, you know. I, I don't know that I would do that. I, I, if I did, I'd certainly want the hand of God on me. You know, uh, uh, brother, uh, who was it? Brother Don Collins said, when you get full of God, it'd make you want to go bear hunting with a switch. You know, well, I, I don't know. I went bear hunting one time, and me and uh, uh, some other fellows went way up in the mountains, and we found some bear tracks and bear signs where they'd been scratching on the trees and all that. But we had uh, ridden a long way, and we were tired. And I tell you what happened. We got way up in the woods uh, up there in the mountains, uh, uh, and uh, uh, we were so tired, I, I said, I'm going to sit right here beside this tree. And before you know it, I nodded off. Uh, I went to sleep. And, I, and, uh, and when I woke up, I thought, boy, that's the dumbest thing. Uh, there was uh, uh, a place, uh, uh, you know, not 20 yards from it where a bear had been marking a tree, you know, and, and it was up here. I mean, he was a big boy, and he had scratched that tree. And I thought, here I am uh, uh, laying out uh, uh, asleep. And he could have come and, and made lunch with me, Brother Wesley. And, and that was my only experience with bear hunting. I don't care to go again, you know. I, I, I was done with that. But, but uh, David said, I went after him. I went after the lion in this instance. And I grabbed him by his beard and I smote him and I slew him. Now, what was he saying? He was saying every sheep is worth fighting for. 
Now, I don't know how many sheep he had in his flock. He might have had 10. He might have had 100. I don't know. But he was keeping his father's sheep. But he said, I'm not going to let you have one. No, not one. Jesus said the good shepherd had 100 sheep, and uh, the 90 and 9 were fine, but one got lost. And he said, what happened? The, the good shepherd went after him, and he found him, and he brought him. And we've all seen that picture of Jesus with that lamb over his shoulder. Listen, uh, he was being like Christ there in that God says, every one of us uh, is of value to him. David faced the lion that challenged his valuation. Is it, it, are, are your children worth a little extra prayer? Are, are your lost loved ones worth a little extra prayer? Is that person that you work with that, that doesn't know God, are they worth a little extra prayer? Uh, maybe the devil's challenging your valuation. Let me tell you what, uh, every person no matter how far down they have gone, every person God is interested in. God is not uh, uh, done with these people. You know, I've seen people down on their luck. And, you know, they will tell you their story. You've seen them. Uh, I, I have them for some reason. I think I've got a magnet on me. I, I've got uh, uh, something on my head that says, ask me for money. You know, because they, every time I go somewhere, they, you know, they see me and they come, you know, and they tell me their story. Uh, and I'll listen. I'll try to listen to their story. But I also try to tell them about the Lord, you know. Now, some of them, when you start talking about the Lord, that's it. They're gone. You know, <laughs> they don't want to hear that. Uh, but I try to tell them, look, uh, 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 God can help you. He will help you if you will let him. You know, David said, I, I, I was uh, 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 young and now I'm old and I have yet to see the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. You know, and my, uh, my thing to them is uh, if you will turn your life over to God and really mean it, really turn your life over to God, God will help you and you won't have to do this because if you're one of the children of the king, God doesn't want you begging. Amen. He'll take care of it. He'll supply your need. He will. Now, you may not have uh, steak and eggs for breakfast every morning, but God will take care of you. Amen. Listen, uh, I, I like, uh, I, I don't really know that I've ever eaten steak and eggs, I, I guess, uh, but, uh, you know, I do like steak, but I don't have it every day. Once in a while, I, I have frosted mini wheats, Brother Raymond. <laughs> like this morning, I, or, or, or sometimes uh, I have a peanut butter sandwich with some banana on it. That's pretty good, you know. Now, now my wife ruins her, uh, her sandwich by putting mayonnaise on it, uh, you know. Uh, 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 I just have to tell you, Brother West, that's just gross. That's all I can say. Uh, 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 but she likes it, so if she likes it, I guess it's all right. Uh, but listen, God will take care of you. Every sheep is worth fighting for. Now, the Bible said that, uh, uh, that we are going to face the adversary. And guess what? Here we go. Uh, uh, you know, hold on to your seat. The things that we value today are being attacked by the lion. You say, what do you mean? Well, the Bible said be sober, be vigilant. The Greek word for vigilant means to keep awake or to stay alert. Don't go to sleep on duty. Amen. Man your post. The things that we value today. Uh, you say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about this Bible right here is under attack. You know, there's more versions out there than you can shake a stick at. They got, uh, you know, the good news for modern man, which is bad news for everybody. The, the RSV, uh, I called it the rattlesnake version, you know. Uh, they, they got the ESV, the RSV. They got the, uh, they even had an Ebonics Bible and all this kind of stuff. I mean, listen, you, you say, preacher, what do you need? Uh, what we need is a good old-fashioned King James. Now, here's an argument for you. I know this has come up recently, and I'll just go ahead and put it out there. Somebody said, uh, you know, we can't trust the King James Bible. I don't want a King James Bible because King James was a pervert. Yeah, that's right. Well, if you do your history, it, it may very well be that he was because he wrote some letters. If you read the letters that he wrote about a friend of his, a male friend of his, 
it, it wasn't something that one man should be writing about another man about how beautiful and gorgeous he was and, you know, all that stuff. But let me tell you what. We call this the King James because King James authorized it and he got folks to go out who were scholars, biblical scholars, and they translated it and they put it together and, and he signed off on it because he had the money and the power and the authority. King James did not write this. You hear me? Uh, and, and so there's nothing wrong with this book. You know, whatever his uh, uh, stipulations were, doesn't have anything to do with this book. So don't let anybody throw you a curveball. This book right here is the best copy of the Word of God that we have today, unless you can go back and find an original version uh, of, uh, you know, uh, the, the original Word of God, which you can't. It doesn't exist. Uh, and so here we have it. This, this uh, is a miracle. God has preserved it. Uh, and, and so if you want to go off and study King James, yes, I think he was probably a little weird. Uh, uh, yes, uh, he, he was. Uh, but uh, he, he didn't write this. He appointed people to write this, people who weren't weird, <laughs> people who knew the Bible, people who knew God, uh, people who could translate, and people who were very meticulous about the word. Now you say, preacher, why do you make such a point out of this? Because, uh, uh, let me give you an example. Your Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, amen, his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life, right? Well, some versions that you'll read, check me on this, uh, and, and go online. You can find other copies online, uh, and you can read them side by side. Some of them will say, for God so loved the world that he gave his son. It doesn't say anything about his only begotten son. It just says his son. Now, that may seem like a little thing, but it's not, because the Bible said that God uh, has called us who are the saved, he has called us the sons of God. Now, I am a son of God this morning, but I am not the begotten son of God. To be begotten of God or to be begotten means that they're a natural son, you know. I am begotten of my father, you know. My, uh, his name uh, was R.C. Arnold Sr. I was named after him, R.C. Arnold Jr. I am begotten of him and my mother, uh, and uh, I am their son. Uh, amen. Uh, and they could have adopted uh, uh, another child, uh, you know, and called him a son and gave him all the rights and privileges of being part of that family, but he would never have been a blood son. You see what I'm talking about? Uh, and, and I'm not trying, trying to strain it in that and swallow a camel here. I'm just saying that what's in the Word of God matters. It matters. And, and, and so, yes, I know we're reading Elizabeth in English, and nobody says thee and thou. What doest thou today? Nobody talks like that. But listen, when you read it, uh, it, it gives you a sense of, uh, you know, poetry. It gives you a sense of, uh, you know, flourish. Uh, and, and you know that you're not reading a, a, a novel by Tom, Dick, or Harry. You're not reading about Harry Potter. Uh, you're reading the Word of God. Amen. So, the things that we value today, the Word of God. The attendance at church is being attacked today. Do you know that the devil would love to see this place closed down and never open again? And I could go on and on. I got to quit here uh, because I'm out of time. But, you know, the devil would love to see this place closed. But, you know, the, the values that our country was built upon, the devil's trying to challenge those today. I mentioned one a while ago. There, there are people today in our government, in our very own government, who would love to take away uh, your Constitution and do away with the First Amendment and the Second Amendment and so on. Uh, they would love for you to be a government slave. Uh, in fact, we're seeing the, butter, uh, the, the borders flooded today, not just here, but the borders being flooded in other countries with uh, uh, immigrants. Let's call them what they are, illegal immigrants. You know, I, I know our president can't say that. 
but I can say it, illegal immigrants. If you're here, you come across the border uh, and you didn't come in the right way, you didn't ask permission, you didn't fill out paper, paperwork, then you're here illegally. Amen. Uh, uh, and, and, and listen, you know why they're flooding it? Because they want this, uh, 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 our uh, people to be downgraded. They, they want, uh, 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 you know, the society that we currently live in, uh, they want it to be, uh, you know, homogenized to where we don't know who's who and what is what. Uh, everything's upside down. Everything is mixed. Uh, uh, and they want it to get so bad that the populace will call on the government and say, help us, come and save us. That's what they want. Uh, you, you say, preacher, you're talking uh, craziness. Well, you just watch and see in the coming months, in the coming years, you just see. We've already been told uh, that there are certain people who, who control power and money that would love nothing better for us than to eat bugs and own nothing. They don't want you to own a house. They don't want you to own anything. They want you to have a place to live, but they don't want you to own it. They don't want you to own a car. They don't want you to own a house. They don't want you to own anything because uh, if you own something, it's yours, right? It gives you a sense of individualism. You can stand on that and say, that's mine. I work for it, you know. I was telling my wife the other day, uh, you know, I went out to the building and I got some tools out and I was working and she said, you enjoy that, don't you? And I said, yeah, there's nothing like having man tools, man stuff. You know, sometimes you don't do nothing to get yourself hurt, Brother Wesley, but, 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 but I got them. They're hanging there. If I need a drill, I got a drill. If I need a weed eater, I got a weed eater. You know, if I need, uh, uh, you know, a razor blade, I got a razor blade. I, I got man stuff, you know. I love it. And, and when I'm dead and gone, my grandkids can have it. They can sell it at a yard sale or use it or do whatever they want to with it. Uh, but listen, I, I love it. Uh, I, I, you know, so I take a certain amount of pride in that. I say, yeah, that's mine because I worked for it. I earned it, bought it with my, my own uh, money, and, and I work with my own hands. Amen. Well, the devil doesn't want you to have that. Uh, and, and, and I got some others, but, but I'm not going to have time to finish today. But I'll just give you these uh, and tell you. Maybe we'll finish another time. Daniel faced a lion that challenged his integrity. He was a member of the Lions Club. Paul faced a lion that challenged his steadfastness. He was a member of the Lions Club. And then, most importantly, Jesus faced a lion. Amen. The, the Bible said that when the tempter came to him in the wilderness, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. Uh, he challenged him in the wilderness. He challenged him in the garden. He challenged him on the cross. Uh, Psalm 22 said, many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan. And, and he's a, it's a euphemism. He's talking about demons there. The bulls of Bashan. He's talking about uh, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, they were marching around. They were walking around. Uh, he said, their mouths are gaping open on me. They, they want me to die. They want me not to finish my journey. They challenge his destiny. Listen, you and I are going to face the lion. When you leave today, the lion's going to be watching you. And somewhere throughout this week, he's going to attack you. He's going to try to persecute you. He's going to try to cause you to doubt. He's going to try to cause you to do something that will make God ashamed of you. He's going to try to uh, cause you financial problems. He's going to try to cause you uh, 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 mental uh, woes. He's going to do anything he can do to cause you uh, to give up your hope in the Lord and to throw your hands up and to say, I quit. Uh, uh, you know, I'm giving up because God doesn't care anything about me. Listen, as God helped David, as he helped uh, Paul, uh, as he helped Daniel, he will help you. Let's stand our feet. Hope you got something out of the message today. Um, and meet us next time in the house of the Lord and pray that God would have his way. Amen. It's